Hi everyone, my name is Gats, you're the Free Librarian. Welcome back to another video. Today I will be doing my January wrap up. I read four books in January for a total of 1,637 pages, but I will be talking about seven books today because there were three at the end of December that I really loved that I didn't have the chance to talk about yet on the channel. So I'll just briefly talk about those as well in here. Um, of these seven books that I will talk about in this video, there was one two-star read, one four-star read, one four-and-a-half star, and four five-star reads, which means, sorry Alan, I'm the new five-star strumpet of booktube. Yeah, January was really good. Um, for me for reading. So let's dive right in. The first book that I read was A Little Bit of Christmas Magic by Kirsty Gay. I didn't know what to expect this going into it. I'd never read anything by Kirsty Fairy. I just wanted something Christmassy because I read it around Christmas time. And so I picked up this novella. Um, and I was so surprised. It was amazing. I loved the vibes. That was mostly it. It was so cozy, so Christmassy. Um, I really liked the friendships in it. I liked the relationships in it. Um, the story is about a woman who organizes weddings in the specific hotel. And one day she is preparing for a wedding that is supposed to take place on Christmas Day. And she meets this man and she has the feeling that she knows him from somewhere, but she doesn't really know um, where from. So um, we have some something happens and I don't I think you should go into it not knowing what happens um, I think you'll enjoy it more then so if you go to Goodreads and read the reviews they tell you what the thing is um, so you know other people um, don't think it's a spoiler apparently, but I think you'd enjoy more if you don't know what happens. But because of that, and because it's so short, it's a little hard to talk about without spoiling it. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's really great vibes. It's a little slice of life type thing. It's not really a romance. Um, the premise might make it seem like it. And there is romance going on, but that's it's not a romance as the genre. Um, but yeah, I I really enjoy it. I like Kirsty Fairy's writing, um, and I highly recommend. So from there, I wanted something else Christmassy because I the a little bit of Christmas magic was a novella. I read it in a day. Um, and Kirsty Fairy had another Christmas rever Christmas novella that was part of another series, um, and that was Christmas at the Isle of Skye. This was a true romance, so it's about Jack, who lives on Skye Island, and he's in love with Ivy, and Ivy has left to Glastonbury because it's her dream to open a shop there with like spiritual things and Glastonbury is the perfect place for that um, but it's Christmas and Zach misses her at home so he goes to Glastonbury to 
maybe get her back or um, just spend the holidays with her. And Ivy actually wants to go home because Glastonbury is not what she expected it to be. Um, but she doesn't want to disappoint the people around her and, and so she pretends like it's all going great um, and romance is a second chance romance um, also again really good vibes and I really like Kirsty Fairy's writing I don't know what it is about it but there's just something that's it has something that I really enjoy um, we also have Angel, who's, um, Zach's best friend, and she's amazing. I love her. She has her own book because it's the Tempest Sisters series, um, which is Angel and her siblings, um, and is like a novella in between. That's actually not one of the sisters, um, but just... Angel's best friend getting his romance, so um, the main series. There'll be a book about Angel, which I do want to read because I really, really liked her. Um, yeah, it was just great vibes, great atmosphere, and I really loved it. And I think I may have found a new favorite author. So next, I reread a book, which is Sapphire Blue by Kirsten Duff, um, which is the second book in the Precious Stone trilogy, which is one of my favorite series of all time. It's such a comfort read. It's about a girl who lives, or who, whose family can time travel basically and not everyone there's very specific people who can travel through time and their entire life or entire family has thought that Gwendolyn who's the main girl uh, Gwendolyn's sister no sister cousin Charlotte um, would be the one but it ends up being Gwendolyn so she's completely unprepared. She doesn't know what to do, um, but she gets rolled up in this secret society um, that where these time travelers are part of. Um, and there's this handsome um, guy called Gideon, who's also a time traveler because they're two time travel families. Um, and there's some romance going on between them and then they have to get blood from the, diff the different generations of time travelers before them for something and it's I really like it um it's not a romance but it's has a very strong romantic component um I feel like the Cruel Prince is the same thing, um, the same like level of romance, um, where it's not, you can't call it a romance, but it's a very strong part of it, or a big part of it. Um, the same here, and it's very slow burn, but it's very cute. Um, it's a YA story, and it's more younger YA, um, if you think of, I say The Cruel Prince definitely reads older than um, the series, but I really love it. I love, I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, Simmons, I know that's how I say it in my head. He's a talking gargoyle and he's just very funny and I love him um yeah 
yeah, I, it, it's great. I'm not a fan of the covers for the English edition. I don't think they capture the vibe of the story very well. Um, the original German covers I like more, which look like this. This is the third book, not the second one, but you get the vibe. This is much more the vibe from that the series has than the English covers. Um, but yeah, I really like it. It's, it's my comfort series. I highly recommend. Um, so then the first book I read this year in January was Midwinter by Susanna Vermeer, which was a thriller. Um, at the time I'd given it two and a half, but thinking about it, two stars is definitely um, more fitting. <laughs> For the book, I, I wasn't a fan. Um, it's about a woman who eight years ago she went skiing with some friends and something happened there and then they have the present where she goes skiing again but she hasn't seen them in, in those eight years. Um, but they go on a skiing trip together again. Um, it was like a, it, the twist was extremely obvious as in the who but the why made no sense um, it didn't like it was one ridiculous two it just didn't work with the story up until that point and the thing that the character had done up until that point, there were some contradictions there, and it, it it just didn't work. I also couldn't stand the main character. She, so she hasn't seen them in eight years, but she still thinks that she knows them better than they know themselves. Um, so two of them are married. Um, and she's talking to the, the guy and he mentions how his wife doesn't want kids but the main character remembers her as wanting kids really badly eight years ago and so she's like are you sure maybe you should talk to your wife again because i'm sure that she still wants kids and she says yes um because like to please you or something and i'm like what makes you think that you know someone you haven't seen in eight years better than their husband who lives with them and sees them every day? Like, what makes you think that you have the right to tell him that he doesn't know his wife? Um, and there are some other moments like that and suddenly she's in charge of the trip for some reason and I don't understand why, and I, I, just, I couldn't stand the main character, and yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't great. At least this was a quick read, and it kept me entertained, but yeah. It wasn't that good. Um, the characters were also pretty flat. And yeah, I don't know. It, there were just some things that didn't work. Um, unfortunately, so I give it two stars. Next up, I have another reread. That was Imperium by Robert Harris. This is the first book in the Kikoro trilogy, which is a historical fiction about Kikoro. And I, I just love this series so much. Uh, the first book was my least favorite one in the series the first time I read it. 
we'll see how we do this time. Um, but I'm reading this for a read along hosted by the Library of Alexandria. Um, and it was really interesting to hear people who were reading it for the first time and also people who didn't know the history behind it. So they just didn't know what happened um, at all. Um, it's a really funny book. It reads like a modern thriller, um, but with real events and the set in ancient Rome. Um, it's extremely historically accurate. There is not one moment that I can say like, oh no, this is this is incorrect. Actually, it was this thing, or this didn't really happen. It's very incorrect, and you can just see that reality often exceeds fiction. Um, it was really funny. It was really nice to see Kikoro just piss off everyone in Rome, and especially the ones in power. And maybe he should just he should just stop doing that. And the fact that he got to live as long as he did is just wild to me. Like, you would expect him to get assassinated a million times, even within his book, and there's two more coming. So, um, I really love it. I really loved being back in this world. I don't love the beginning of this book because it's sort of a, a training montage, um, which isn't my favorite part, but after that, it gets better. So, if you're going to read it and you see the training montage and you're like, oh, this is not for me, um, keep reading till a little bit further and then decide if it's for you or not. Uh, but I really love it. I really enjoy it. I highly recommend it. Um, and I gave this four and a half stars. Um, and then we're up to two five star reads, two amazing reads. Um, first, we have Virgin River by Robin Carr. This was on my 12 books to read in 2023 um, list and I'll give you my evolution of thoughts while I was reading the book. So I started a little hesitant going in to, oh I'm not sure this is for me. Uh, I might DNF it but I'll just give it just a little bit more to, you know what? It's not that bad. It's not a new favor or anything, but it could be like a nice palette cleansery type series to I love this book. Um, it was the biggest turnover I'd ever had in my entire life. Um, it's about a woman who works as a nurse in LA, but she wants something new and she wants out of there. Her husband had recently lied, which is also part of it. Um, and she just, she just wants out. And she gets this job as a nurse slash midwife in this little village in California called Virgin River. And as soon as she arrives there, she decides that she hates it and it's not what she expected, and so she wants to leave already. Um, but every time she finds like a little, little thing, a little reason to stay just a little bit longer, and then once this has happened, she can leave. Um, and then there's this handsome bar owner person called Jack, I think his name was, and there's a romance between them. I wouldn't call it a romance book, um, but 
it's a contemporary book with a romantic plot. I just think there's a little too much other things going on in order to truly be a romance book, but the romance element was definitely present. Um, our main character, what was her name again? Melinda, I think. Uh, she was a very, she was a strong female character while still being feminine and not being like the toxic, strong female character that is badass and, and stuff. And just, I don't know. She's a strong character, but in a feminine way, I'd say. Um, and Jack is an amazing love interest. Oh my god, he's a dream. Um, he's just, he's so caring and so nice and it, it, it's probably a little wish fulfillment, but you know, I, I love Jack. Um, so it's, it reminds a lot of like small town romances. But if you're not a fan of the cheesiness that small time romances tend to have, then this might be a good option for you. Um, it, it, it's a lot... It's just not as cheesy. Also because the main characters are just a little bit older already. Um, I mean, the, the, the male love interest is for the woman there is no age given um so there it's not like your early 20s um or something so yeah it's it's great we also have the, the component of grief um as well with melinda's husband who had died um so that's part of it as well and I liked how that was handled and how moving on from that and maybe starting a new relationship after that was handled. Um, yeah, I just, I really loved it. This book reminded me that not that reading can be fun because I had fun reading before, that's not a thing, but just, just reading can just make you happy and just can be so feel good. I literally, when I finished it, I had a smile on my face and I felt so warm inside. And just the cozy vibes and I want to live in Virgin River and I, I loved it so much. So, so much. There were a lot of pregnant women there. A lot of pregnant women for the small ness of the town but okay she's a midwife i mean cool um so yeah i highly recommend if it sounds interesting to you and then the last book that i read in january maybe my favorite book of the year already um it it definitely has that potential, which is high praise. Um, and that is Cress by Marissa Meyer, which is the third book in the Lunar Chronicles. Um, the Lunar Chronicles is a YA sci-fi series that is um, fairy tale retellings. Um, and there is a plague going on and it's just stories of the girl trying to survive the plague and stuff like that But it escalates and the scope gets really big and epic and this third book is a Rapunzel retelling and I just I loved it. I So I liked the first book as a book but I loved it as a retelling. The second book I liked as a book as well. I thought it was okay as a retelling, but I loved as a sequel. 
this one, this third installment, I loved as a book, I loved as a retelling, and I loved as a sequel. It was, it was perfect for me. Um, I love Cress, the main character. Um, I mean, if I can't get some real explicit autism representation in my sci-fi fantasy, then Cress is the next best thing. And she's just, I want to give her a hug. She must have been so lonely her entire life. And she's naive and she doesn't know anything about the world which is which makes sense for her oh, and I love her and then there is um, Thorn who he's a character type that I really love he's sort of this, this like handsome I can get any girl I want type person and he knows it and he, he he flirts with everything and everyone and he can't take anything seriously until he has to be serious and then it's focus on what needs to be done and then he's, he's great. I love that character type. Um, it pairs really well with Chris and I, I love their dynamic. Um, I... Yeah, the plot was great too. There's a trope that I love that is kind of spoilery, so I admit that's very spoilery, uh, so I won't say what it is, but I loved it when it was there. Um, near the end, it's sort of, they need to do something, and then it kind of becomes a heist story, which I really like seeing how everything part of their plan just comes together and fits perfectly and they have backup plans for the backup plan of their backup plan fails um it, uh, it, I just loved it there was a reveal that was excellent um there were some scenes um, the scenes on Luna, if you know, you know, they were super hard to read and I wasn't prepared for them. So if you are going to read it, know that there are some really dark scenes in here. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I love it. I, this is my favorite book in the series so far. I still have to read uh, Winter and it's a short story collection um, as well but I don't think that's part of the main story. I think that's just in the same world maybe about the same characters but I think that the arc and, and the, the plot really comes to an end in Winter uh, and I'm so excited about that one. Um, I've read Fairest already, but that was in February, so stay tuned for my February wrap-up to know my thoughts about that. Um, but yeah, I loved Chris. I highly, highly recommend the Lunar Chronicles if you haven't read it yet. It's amazing. Um, so those were the seven books that I read in January. Let me know if you've read any of them. How did you, did you like them? Um, I will see you again later. Bye-bye.